Google announces all sorts of security updates, a few updates on the crack attack, and a new IoT botnet has already infected millions. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for October 24th, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is the best way to support the show and it will help us reach our next goal. A quick reminder as well, don't miss out on my giveaway of the NES Classic over at youtube.com slash tech thing. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can find it real easy. Just comment on the newest episode over there and hit subscribe to hear the winner announcement. And now, on to the news. So first off, and this is good news, Google has been working hard lately to increase privacy and security of their users. Most notably is a new feature called Advanced Protection for your Google account, and this would be useful for journalists, celebrities, political figures, victims of harassment, or other people who may be targeted in an attack. Now while Google already has two-factor authentication, U2F key acceptance, and login alerts, they are now adding additional layers of security on top of that too. If you enable advanced protection on a Google account, an attacker would need much more than just your password to log into said account. You will need two physical security keys with the FIDO Alliance Universal Second Factor. You would probably need one that is Bluetooth so that it would work with your phone or tablet, and then you would probably need one USB key to work with a computer. Whenever you log in, one of these keys would be used to plug in or pressed to signify that you own and have access to both of those devices. Alongside this, only Google Apps would be allowed third-party access, and if you lose those keys, you would be required to go through a much more rigorous process to prove your identity before getting back info on your account. Obviously, this step is taking security much more seriously, but it also detracts from consumers' convenience, which is why Google is marketing this towards a smaller percentage of users. The advanced protection program is only available to consumer Google accounts for the time being. But they've also decided to implement some new security features for all users as well. So if you use Chrome browser, there's this thing called Chrome Cleanup, which is built into Chrome, and it will now identify and prompt you to remove any malware that is detected in Chrome or any software that has made changes to Chrome without your consent. Google teamed up with security company ESET, or E-S-E-T, to make this happen. Now, Chrome also has a built-in restoration setting that will alert you if an extension has modified your settings without your consent. It'll allow you to revert the changes back to your defaults, and each of these Chrome changes has started rolling out as of last week to Windows users. And from Desi Matrix on Patreon, just a quick reminder too, if you are a Patreon, you can share your favorite news stories in the community tab over there. Uh, he sent in this story about Google. They are also testing a new feature for Android devices called DNS over TLS that will encrypt DNS requests on Android devices. Sounds a little weird, but let's get into it. So encrypting DNS over TLS means that your ISP, for example, would not know the domain name of sites that you are visiting, but they could probably still see the IP address. DNS requests are usually done in plain text via other protocols like UDP or TCP, so using this with a trusted VPN would be extremely helpful. HTTPS traffic obviously could still have observable unencrypted DNS requests sent by the user, so adding that additional layer of security on top top of that is very important, and it's a really good move by Google if it does get released as an update to consumers. It is now time for some updates on Crack, which sounds awkward, but I reported on this early last week. Crack is the Wi-Fi handshake series of attacks that can cause headaches for any WPA2 secured wireless network. Since the news broke last week, many different companies have already posted updates in response. Microsoft updates started rolling out on October 10th. Apple and Google will be releasing updates in the next few weeks, and Amazon, for example, is currently reviewing which devices are affected. Several different AP and wireless router manufacturers, including Netgear, Eero, Linksys, Belkin, D-Link, and TP-Link, have already started implementing patches for their devices. More consumer devices manufacturers are also on the way. I also got a few comments on the last episode regarding Mac filtering and if that would help. And Mac filtering does not help, unfortunately, because not only can Mac addresses be spoofed, so 
Obviously, it would not help in that occasion, but also because Crack attacks the protocol itself on any devices using wireless, including APs. I also saw a question about access points and whether or not they would be affected. Straight from the source, quote, what if there are no security updates for my router? Our main attack is against the four-way handshake and does not exploit access points, but instead targets clients, so it might be that your router does not require security updates. We strongly advise you to contact your vendor for me details. In general, though, you can try to mitigate attacks against routers and access points by disabling client functionality, which is, for example, used in repeater modes, and disabling 802.11r fast roaming. For ordinary home users, your priority should be updating clients such as laptops and smartphones. So the router can be attacked as well, though not by their main crack attack, but it does require authenticated devices. There are a slew of routers that support 802.11r R as well, so if an update is available for years, just go ahead and update it. Since routers are prone to not receiving updates, this is why professionals are recommending updates to your devices, because those are more commonly going to be receiving those updates. But since many IoT devices won't receive an update at all, I'm also recommending go ahead and patch your router as well. It's not going to hurt the thing. That way, all known possible entries for crack are hopefully mitigated. Keep in mind, crack is a series of attacks against wireless protocols, not not just one attack. It would be wise to err on the side of caution and update your access points when those updates are made available. A new IoT attacking malware thread has been making its way into networks across the globe, infecting one million networks so far and counting. The malware, called Reaper or IoT Troop, comes one year after Mirai botnet attacked machines and is using some of Mirai's code to work. The difference in Reaper is it uses actual vulnerabilities in the code of IoT devices to infect them instead of just looking for default passwords, which is what Mirai did. Reaper affects routers from D-Link, Netgear, and Linksys, as well as IoT devices from Vacron, GoAhead, and AV Tech, just to name a few of the affected ones. Two security research firms, Checkpoint and NetLab360, posted about the botnet on Friday. So far, Reaper has not been used on a large-scale attack, but it could potentially face a real threat if used for a botnet in the coming months. Checkpoint Checkpoint's intrusion detection system detected the malware on several different networks and noticed a rapid increase of infections in the past two weeks. The malware would open up a Netcat reverse shell to an attacker's IP, and the infected machines would also look for other devices to infect as well. 60% of the corporate networks that Checkpoint watches were shown to include the malware. That's a little scary. The malware has not been DDoSing anybody yet, but it is continuously being updated with new vulnerabilities, so it can continue attacking targets. Checkpoint listed the device manufacturers for products that are vulnerable to Reaper, so if an update is available for those devices, update them ASAP. Otherwise, factory resetting the device could also remove the malware, at least for a short amount of time. Thank you again to all of the wonderful people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You might have noticed it's a little bit dark in here. One of my lights burnt out today. That was fun. It made popping noises. It was scary. So yeah, our studio is dark right now. You are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week. We're on the way to our next goal, which just so happens to allow me to upgrade some of our equipment. So it turns out I'm going to have to budget out a little bit of money for a light, apparently. <laughs> and it will also open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month. Any little bit helps us grow the show, and in return, you will get access to a bunch of extras on Patreon. We might even feature your adorable fur baby in an upcoming episode just like these ones. And remember to check out the perk levels on Patreon, and thank you again for helping us keep the show coming completely independent. And of course, if you cannot donate, you can hit that subscribe button, you can share this episode on your favorite social media and use that hashtag threatwire so that we see it. And with that, I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you on the internet.